Hey guys, I'm going to show in a video today. It's a pretty short one on how to remove the ignition lock cylinder from the uh, from from the steering housing here on this '98 Chevrolet Cheyenne. Uh, you start with removing this lower plastic shroud. This tilt lever just snaps out. There's a little detent here that that holds it in place. It just snaps in and out. And then a T25 Torx. There's two T25 Torx screws. One here and another one right here in the back. Once you get these two T25s out, this guy will start to come down. In the back, there are two little hooks, just like this, that loop around a stud that's on the top part. You push in, uh, push towards the back, then push in. And see, there's that one. Make sure you do it carefully. You don't want to break these. This plastic can get brittle when it's, when it's aged. I'm going to do the one on the other side now. And now we have the lower shroud housing off. The next step is to get the top piece of the plastic off. That is held in place by two E5 Torx head bolts. There's one here. Take this first E5 off, and you might have to hold this little shaft here, this plastic shaft. It might be moving if it's separated from the top of the plastic housing with as old as this plastic is on these vehicles. And then the other one is directly up underneath here, and I'm going to have to um, pause the camera. I'll take that one off. I'll give you a shot of that in just a second. Okay guys, here's that other E5 bolt I was talking about. It's right here. Get a little back here to give you perspective right underneath so the adjacent to the side of the ignition switch. So I'm gonna take this guy out and we'll come back and show removing the top. All right, now that we got those two E5 bolts off, go get the uh, tilt lever that you took out before snap it back in because we're going to need to lower the, ha the the steering column. Of course, if you don't have tilt, then you don't have to worry about this. Take this guy out again. Then you're going to need some type of a spudging tool or a prizing tool made of plastic so you don't damage anything because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be separating the outer part of the steering wheel soft plastic and prizing up the hard plastic from the top shroud. Nice and slow until you get it out all the way on both sides. Okay, once that's done, we're going to take our key, put it in just enough, press the brake, and lower uh, the uh, gear shift lever all the way down so that we can then work this guy out the rest of the way. Okay, now, next thing we're going to have to do is go down and disconnect the negative battery cable if you haven't done it already, because in order to remove the lock cylinder, we're going to have to advance it to the start position. So let me pause, do that, come back and pop it out. All right, now I'm going to put the gear shift lever back into park, reach in here, remove my key, and finish removing the top housing. Now, you know, the, cheated a little bit with this because I've already in the past knocked this piece out um, because it was difficult to get off and on when you have to service this kind of a thing. And I just leave it on the back of the uh, ignition lock cylinder like a washer. So you, you can either do what I did there, you know, you can get it up part way and, and just give it a, a sharp whack. It's usually enough to, to knock this thin ABS blast, uh, plastic off here. Uh, the other thing you can do, though, is if you have a 90-degree shaped um, um, pick or, or punch or something of that nature that you can slip under here before you fully remove this, you know, and get it under there and into this little hole and push it down, that'll work, too. What you're going to have to do to get the actual lock cylinder out is there's this hole right here, and you need a small punch. You're going to move this guy over to the start position press down on it 
and it comes right out. All right, so let's take a look at this guy now we got him out. Um, I'll tell you why I'm taking him out, but I'll show you a couple of things that can go wrong here. There's a, a locking bar here, which locks into place when you have the key out. And if you notice, you put the key in, this guy falls, and he comes up when you take him out, and you just watch it very carefully. It's this guy right here. You're only gonna move about a millimeter. And then I put the key in, he drops. What'll happen is this thing, uh, either one of the springs on one of the sides will give out, and it'll get caught in a half down, half up position. And that's usually a situation you have where you can't turn the key. That's one thing that can go wrong. Uh, another thing that can go wrong, and it's the case on mine, is, is this guy right here. This plate that covers the tumbler springs. Under here are your, are your tumblers that key the lock to your key. And there's a, a set of springs, one for each one, and this, this retaining bar holds them down. This guy can pop up on one side or the other. And this one's actually my fault. I changed this, this um, out because I had this problem, where one of these had gone out, one of these springs on the locking bar. I changed this out, I brought the tumblers over into the new GM ignition lock and I had recoded it from my key and I forgot to stake the ends of this retaining bar to keep it from popping out. And so I had a situation where I could turn the key and it wouldn't start. That was because it wasn't going over far enough to, uh, to, you know, to actually get ignition. And you can see when I had that situation where I had uh, this in here and I had my punch and I was trying to get this guy out and uh, it kept poking right along here because I wasn't reaching um, uh, far enough in this hole to push this retainer down, which is what slides up under the hole when you turn it to the start position. This is what the punch is usually pushing down so you can remove the lock. I hope this uh, helps you out. Of course, reassembly is just reversing the process. Uh, you need to put the key back in, of course, before you do that. You'll know which way is up because of the indentation for the position of start or run and knowing that you have this retainer up. I'll put a light coating of uh, GM high temperature grease on here too uh, to keep it nice and, uh, and freely moving. I hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.